Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Oh my god, we're back in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. How's it feel? Let's go around the table, Shams. I'm I mean it's great. It's great being back here with you guys. It's been it's been too long. Chandler? Yeah, it's been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not being in studio? I, I will say You're I the like... only one that lives here. What's wrong with you? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I feel like I'm here last than you guys. <laughs> uh, Lou, feeling I'm having happy? a time. Glad, good to see y'all. Smooth man. flight here? It was pretty smooth. Okay, so My here. son was a little active, but you know, what four-year-old isn't on an airplane? <laughs> okay, no, that's It fair. could be worse. It could be worse. Um, We've got a lot of basketball. And we got college basketball starting this week, like the real college basketball. For everyone who hasn't watched a single minute all year, this year we all become experts. But we are going to start with Nuggets and Mavericks because this was a doozy of an ending. What Mr. a game. Kyrie with a buzzer beater leading the Mavs over the Nuggets 107 105. Kyrie with 24 7 and 9. Luca 37 and wow. 9. That's ridiculous. And Jamal Murray. <laughs> I mean, it's just fun to watch. Uh, yeah, a running left-hander at the buzzer. As you can tell, the celebration mm. ensued. Let's start with you, Chandler. Reaction, difficulty, what kind of a grade are we giving this? Oh, it was a 10 out of 10. It's like he's, this is like a horse shot that he does in the backyard, huh. not at the NBA game, not at the end of it over Jokic God. fading away <laughs> from the free throw line. I mean, this shot is extremely difficult. Um, the fact that the game was tied, and, and I mean, this is literally, that's all he could get off. He could have stepped back, I guess, but this is a crazy <laughs> shot, crazy ending, and this is a big win for Dallas. They've been finding something lately. They've won, I think, five out of six games, and this is a huge win, because this is a team that they know they're gonna have to go through. Um, but yeah, this shot I don't think was practiced very much. This <laughs> is just kind of a let it rip here at the buzzer. No, listen, I've seen Kyrie make a, a plethora of shots in the lane with his left hand that's been impressive, but to be 15 from to that 17 deep? feet away from the rim, anybody else, we're gonna, it's gonna go too high, it's gonna go too low for everybody else, but this looked like a shot that was comfortable for him. He knew he couldn't get back to a strong hand. He went with the left and it looked smooth, it looked fun. I'm, I'm more impressed that he did it in a game that he hadn't ate or drank anything. <laughs> All day long. Oh, that's right, Ramadan. Yes, he's, oh he was, my he was, gosh. He was pra he's practicing Ramadan, and um, that, it was just incredible just to see that shot, man, and 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 to be able to finish the game. Like my that. question is, if they, if it wasn't tied, if they were down one, would he have gone to this shot? Because if he misses it and they, and they lose the oh, game yeah. with taking that shot, it's a whole nother story today. You know what I mean? Right. So the fact that the game was tied, I think, made it a little. He's easier. like at, at the playground, just having <laughs> yeah. fun. Like, let's see, let's see like. what I can do here. But regardless, okay. my God, that was an insane shot. Uh, craziest game winners ever. I don't know where you would put that. I don't even know if you have a list of that that you've thought of already. I got a couple that come to mind right yeah. away for me. It's gonna be the Vince Carter dunk. Mm. Um, the the lob out from out of bounds from Jason Kidd at the buzzer. Mm. That one stands out to me. Uh, Michael Jordan's double clutch over Craig mm -hmm. Elo stands out to me. Um, and this is going to be there. I, I'm already seeing people saying this is the best game winner they've ever seen. Yeah, this was not just the type of shot. We've never seen a running it's lefty hook shot from over that Jokic. far. Like Lou said, <laughs> yeah. this isn't like in the paint. This isn't a floater. This is that's just insanely deep. So uh, yeah, I don't. I, there's been some heaves. There's been some you know longer shots. But the degree of difficulty of this on the offhand. It's got to be one of the craziest shots. Well, um, there were some tweets after this one. Damian Lillard up first, tweeting about what he just saw, saying that Kyrie's the most skilled MF ever. Uh, bruh. Bruh. Mm. bruh. Although I always <laughs> used to spell it differently. Interesting. You, um, you guys agree? I Yeah, I agree. I think he's the most fun. Like, to, when you watch him play, it's insane that he can move and do those things with the basketball in his hand. We all know how well he can handle the basketball and dribble and how it's poetry in motion. They always, you always hear that term when you're talking about Kyrie Irving. But, yeah, there's nothing he can't do on the <laughs> golf course. He's so smooth. He gets to his spots. He can shoot. He can score. He's got the ball on a string. So he is, he is definitely respected from players and hoopers that know the game because he's just impossible to guard and he is just dead nice. The degree the of difficulty that he makes things yeah. look so easy. Like his finishing. You know, whether he's fin yeah. Right, whether he's finishing at the rim, dribbling through defenses to get to one of those tough finishes, one of the most skilled of all time. That was, it was fun to watch. What was your biggest takeaway from this one? I mean, just seeing the way Kyrie Irving's smiling on the court, <laughs> he's got his kids on the sideline and in the locker room and him hugging Luka Doncic. Uh, at the end of the game, like they were embraced, they hugged for like a good, like ten seconds. Like they, it's a the, the chemistry, good hug. That's the, a good the hug. chemistry that those two guys have, and Luka Doncic actually genuinely loves 
Kyrie Irving as a teammate and, and that relationship and him being the type of star that can command Luka Doncic's respect. And I think for everything that happened in Brooklyn, now Kyrie Irving's in a situation where he literally can just focus on basketball and everything else just follows suit. No drama. There's nothing else that's going on around him. And I spoke about it last week. I reported on it last week. He has a great desire to play on Team USA. He wants to be part of the Olympic team in Paris. Um, and I think we're, we're going to see potentially if that's going to come to fruition. But he was the 2014 World Cup MVP. He was on the 2016 Olympic team that won gold medal. Um, and I, I think that he's going to be a name to continue to monitor for Team USA. And a lot of that has been about this season. I don't think a lot of people expected him to be a name that we're going to be talking about again for Team I USA. Would, I would love to see him on Team USA. Yeah. First of all, I think they could use him. I think he's one of the best scoring guards. He can shoot the ball, especially from that length in the Olympics. And just to see the growth and how far he's come from all the drama, everything surrounding his name, all the, you know, some of the shit he said, it's been very self-inflicting. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Now it's just, like Sean said, he's happy. He's embracing Dallas. He said he, said he wished he was drafted to Dallas. So he <laughs> seems to be happy there. They're peaking. They're winning. He seems to be He playing. also asked Boston to keep him forever. Too. Yeah, it's true. That's a, that but is I bad. just, I like, when you talk about Kyrie Irving, he's so much fun to watch. His basketball game is so beautiful. And that's all now we're talking about, which is great. We're not talking about any of the other distractions, any other drama with him. From players aside, I just want us to put the very best players mm -hmm. that we have in America on the floor. I want I want us to be dominant. I want us to show a force of dominance when we go to these things because the rest of the world's catching up. Some of our best players in this league are international players and rightfully so. They deserve their respect and so we got to stop putting these iffy okay teams in the World Cups. I think we do a better job in the Olympics, but every time we show up in the USA jersey, I want to see our very best players every single time. With all that being said, everybody that's committed to Team USA, we're, we're getting it. We're getting that goal this year. We're getting it. I, I will say, I will say. So LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Joel Embiid, mm -hmm. Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Devin Booker. That's seven. That's about the skeleton of the I, team right gold. now. I wouldn't mind. Gold. Another name in active conversations with USA basketball, Anthony Edwards. Minnesota. Yeah. So oh, you, yeah, gotcha. you sign him up. He played on the team last year. That that puts That's you at about one. eight players. Now it's like, does Kyrie Irving, Tyrese Halliburton, where's Anthony Davis? Man, where's where the does spirit Bam doing All-Star Weekend? We need Anthony. Yeah, right. <laughs> we need Anthony Davis down there too. We need some size. We, we need some if size. If you made the game, All-Star game, international versus U.S., maybe there'd be more spark. Mm. Global domination I don't, I don't and know. all. You might have an eight-on-eight -eight game there. Yeah. Why? Who's going to be the eighth international player yeah, on the Yeah, I can be very deep. <laughs> Hold on, I can think about this for a second. Yeah. Well, Joel Embiid now has switched sides, so that, that's kind us. of a bummer. He's I know. That's, no, that's not a bummer. That's that, well, awesome. it's a bummer for everyone else. That's an idea. It's divisive, but it's an idea. It is. It's I like, like we're on to something here. We're on to something. Us against the world. Yeah. I don't know if there's something there. Um, but I will say, I like where Team USA is going, and the fact that they have these commitments from all these star players is huge. It's a great. Yeah. How we, big is that? That it's, it's Paris too. Like uh, it's, well, the players know this too. Like Lou said, everyone's catching up. I could tell me everyone. USA is going to get everyone's best game. So these players, they they know that and. And they know that it's almost an onus. It's the responsibility for them to show up, to play, and put your best it's team out there. It's gotten to the there. point. I look forward to watching Argentina. I look forward to oh, seeing yeah. Serbia, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Spain. I look forward to seeing these teams France because is gonna be tough. it's so many guys that you're familiar with on these teams that are very competitive. It's going to oh, be a good time. If the well, U.S. loses to France. Ke <gasps> Kevin Durant said it, or. I think, the other week. He's like, I want to beat teams when we go there by 40, 50 right. points. And I think when LeBron James, Stephen Curry, KD got on the phone last summer watching that Team USA kind of falter in, in the World Cup, it's like, let's get our best guys and let's... Well, that's the type destroy. of team that we shouldn't even put out there in the, in the first place. I don't know how we got to this no, topic, but, like, yeah, that but team we hear was, that. Let's team, talk about it. That team was not good. That team was, shouldn't even be on the floor. We have too many good players. We have too many talented players. But to, why did we get there? To put that because a lot of guys, because a lot were, of guys, were in contracts. Exactly. Years They're waiting on the Olympics. Olympics. They're waiting on the actual Olympics, not the World Cup. And you don't want to give up two weeks in your summer. That's precious time. But yeah, Global. Paris helps for sure. Paris does help. Paris a little. Helps. It's a great destination. Um, Mavericks have won five of their last six, and if you look at the Western standings, there it is. It's just a jumbled up mess in the middle with the Kings and Suns. Chandler, uh, who gets the six and who avoids the play-in? Talk to me. Well, I think Sacramento gets the six. Still, to me, I think Phoenix is the scariest team out of that group right there because when they're healthy and they're going, they, they are extremely dangerous, especially on the offensive end. 
But right now, this is the time where the healthiest team and the team with the momentum wins. And that seems to be the Dallas Mavericks. They've won five out of six, and they seem to be having fun out there. Sean just said Kyrie Irving is back to himself, just hooping and doing what he does. And this game like last night where they were so good as a duo, but they still they had off nights from Derek Jones. They had off nights from P.J. Washington, and they still find ways to win because they're so good offensively. So if they can find a way to still continue to get that balanced attack, they're a tough team, but... I think the Kings end up getting the 60, and I think they have the tiebreakers as well. Yeah, I agree with Chandler. I'm still, I'm still on the Kings, Kings uh, wave. I feel like they've in that in that pack of teams, they've been the most consistent so far this year. They've been, uh, you know, they had guys overlooked at All Star Weekend. I'm sure that's going to be a motivating factor Chandler. for them to show and prove coming into the postseason. And I'll just say it, man. With with 14 to 15 games left, I just hadn't seen the consistency and dominance that I would have liked to see from the Phoenix Suns so far. Ooh. The Dallas Mavericks are playing hard. I think they're a little shorthanded with, with the talent that they have outside of, you know, their superstar guys, but they're making do with what they, what they have in the group that they do have. I feel like um, Phoenix has, has um, under, um, underperformed. Yeah, they have. I if, mean... that's a, if that's a way of saying it without, you know, getting anybody a little riled up and upset. I just hadn't seen the consistency there with with how they play with their injuries and everything they've dealt with. So, you know, I like Sacramento in their last spot. It is uh, crazy because we keep saying Phoenix, 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 but we're kind of running out of time. Because, no, yeah, be, uh, because you know what is what they're capable of. We know what they are on paper. We know how good it sounds with those three guys. We always think, how do you stop them all? And you can't, but they haven't been on the floor enough mm -hmm. for me to have confidence in them. But still, in the back of my mind, I know how good they can be, so that makes them very, very scary. Yeah, I'm doing the math. What, Suns have 14 games? 14, 14 games left. That's it. So speaking of the Suns, we will stick with that. Big loss. That was a nice little saggy there. I know. Did you see what happened? Uh, the Bucks with Dame Lillard leading the way, 141-29. They didn't even have Giannis in this one, but he did have 31 points, a career high tying 16 assists. That's his first big game like this uh, since joining the Bucks and in Bucks history. Uh, Bobby Portis, 31-10. They hit 24 of 41 threes. And Kevin Durant, weird night, uh, 11 points, 9 rebounds. But let's concentrate on Dame Lillard for a second here. 30 points and 15 assists. That was his first game of, of those numbers, at least, since joining Milwaukee. How do we make that happen more often? I think it comes with time. You know, even Dame said, you know, he came into the Milwaukee situation not trying to step on toes and kind of trying to find his rhythm and, and place with, with that group. He just ha he has to be the lead guy. You know, I think out of him, Middleton, and Giannis, he's going to be the guy that you put the ball in that can absolutely go get you a bucket and, and can score. So with that being said, why not play through Dame? Why not give him the basketball and allow him to be himself and everybody else figures it out? Giannis, to me, has always been the type of player where he can put his head down in the, in the open floor. Nobody can stop him. But now that they've started playing that two-man game together where he's a picker, he's a roller, he's giving them different looks, that makes them dangerous. And now Middleton back for his first game mm. and to have 22. We talked about all his chemistry. That's not a Chris Middleton problem. Chris has come in, and that first game back, it, it looks seamless to me. Yeah, and, and Giannis is their I think Giannis is their best player, right? But that doesn't mean you have to play through him. I think they play through Damian Lillard, and that opens up the entire floor for Giannis to even be better offensively. Because when you surround him, who, like Lou said, with his head down, he attacks, he gets out in transition, that opens up the floor so much and allows these other... Because you have to help when guarding Giannis. No one's going to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, especially in, transi in transition. So when you have a team like this, who had 18 threes in the first half <laughs> last night... They should only get better with Giannis, but I think they have to play through Damian Lillard, continue to let him do what he does, and that's going to open up the floor and make Giannis's game even easier. Um, Lou talked about Chris Middleton with the 22 points. Look, he missed 16 games and then just jumped back out there like nothing had happened. And that's not easy. That it can't be easy, but title chances... Where is he in, in the importance? Well, he's the key. He was huge in their title run before, and he's huge now. And obviously, they add Damian Laird. And I think Chris Middleton and Bobby Portis are so important to this team. Every time someone's gone out, Bobby Portis has stepped up and had a great game. Chris Middleton, he's been in and out. He's been on a minute restriction. He this, this, this game last night, this was the first time I've seen him almost just healthy and fresh and getting to his spots and looking like he did a couple years ago. So it's a great luxury to have because this is another guy. This He was their closer when they won mm -hmm. the championship. The ball was in his hands. He was the one to go get a bucket. Um, and now so you see him kind of get back to his old ways, doing things like this, hitting step backs, posting up smaller guys. It's just another dynamic that they have when they, ha when they have Giannis going downhill. They have Dame stretching the floor in terms of defense. Now you have this guy who can kind of do a little bit of everything. It it's huge. I, I was looking down and... 
that this topic just took me to a dark place. Whoa, oh boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Game seven, I was on the Atlanta Hawks and we had an opportunity to beat the Bucks. And Giannis was out. Uh oh. And Chris Middleton <laughs> put that team <laughs> on his back. <laughs> it had a 20.4 quarter and sent us to Cabo. <laughs> and and I'm thinking I'm how important, <laughs> how important is this guy? Like he literally said, Giannis, no problem. I can go beat these guys by myself. And we had a joke. It was like he turned into Kobe Bryant out of the blue. Like he just, he, he woke up Chris Middleton and went to sleep Kobe Bryant. And, and that's what he did. That, and that's the look that he's going to give this group. You know, if Dame doesn't have it, if Giannis doesn't have it, you have a guy that can go out and get 30 or go get 20 points fresh out of bed and hadn't played in 16 games. That's what Chris Middleton is going to give to Milwaukee Bucks. I still like Boston, but if there's going to be a team that's going to challenge him for that title coming out of the East, it's going to be the Milwaukee Bucks, it's and Chris Middleton's going to be important. It's that. true. We've talked all year long, Boston, Boston, Boston. It's not going to be an easy series against the Milwaukee Bucks. This team is complete. This team can shoot. This team is defending better, which you got to give credit to Doc Rivers. Uh, but this team is deep. They have a lot of shooters. Malik Beasley, they have a lot of ways they can hurt you, but... With, with Chris Middleton playing the way he did last night, if he can have those efficient nights and go get buckets, it's, it's going to be a dogfight when they play Boston. He's the, he's the X factor. And I will say, we got to give Doc Rivers credit. I think Hi. Chandler spoke about it before. The ball being in Damian Lillard's hands, that was Doc Rivers saying it and making sure that they preached it and they practiced it. I think Adrian Griffin just for whatever reason could not get that across to the team, could not get that across to the Giannis and, and to the Kumpo and Damian Lillard as far as the, yes, Giannis is in the group. I think everyone can say he's one of the best players in the league. Probably the best player on this team, of course. But Damian Lillard, when the ball's in his hands, when he can be the closer, when he can be the lead ball handler, that's where this team thrives and is successful. All right, so with the Giannis thing and the hamstring, is that a big deal? My sense is, listen, he's been... He, the fact that he was at least able to warm up or, or try to play, you know, you just want to make sure especially this late in the season that he's 100%, especially with a hamstring. Yep. Um, so I expect he's going to continue to test it out every single and day. And the hamstring is something that you don't want to mess with because right. it can linger and it can get worse. But Doc said last night, this isn't an injury. They're just taking this time. Well, we saw, what was it, uh, last week or the week before, like he warmed up. That's true. And then he, he had the issue. And he made a weird movement. And then, and then they just sat yeah. him. And then he played the next game. So this late in the season with a player that good with the stakes this high as far as like Chandler said like it's really like let's be, let's let's call it like it's Milwaukee and Boston that's right it. now like how dare you that is can New York, I'm not calling it can no. Cleveland I mean, Cleveland no. has something to say about it but not it. can a no. team do an upset but I think going in you have yep. to look at them too as the favorite they can't how dare you in the month of March say an upset they can't, can't occur and by the way with the production <laughs> that they're getting from Chris Middleton and Bobby Portis this is just giving them even more confidence to not rush Giannis back because they know they can still win games against teams like Phoenix I'm not saying can't happen I'm saying, I'm saying they're, they're the happen. favorites somebody's going but to upset in, somebody in, but in March no. with that said in March Teams start to separate themselves. You're starting to see who's dead serious about trying to win a title and who's trying to stay above water. Barring a bad, bad injury from one of these guys, it is going to be Milwaukee, Boston, and the Eastern Conference Finals. So is or the they field might meet up in the? Could they meet up in the? No, they can't. Well, hold on. Can't so are you um, offering a bet where we get to take the field in this thing? In I East? would like to take that. Yes, I'll take those two. I would you like get to take anybody that. else. Okay, thank you. What's what nope, are we betting? I'll, whatever you want. Whatever you want. How about you pay me ten grand? I pay you a hundred bucks. <laughs> Oof. I like it. All right. What are uh, those odds? <laughs> These are bad, bad You're odds. You're like, wait, hold on. How did that math work yeah. out? I don't know. And somehow I still want to take it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you feel confident. Um, friend of the show, Isaiah Thomas. This was a fun tweet we yeah. had, Shams. I got very happy when I saw this one. So he's got a gig. Isaiah Thomas, ten day contract with Woo! the Phoenix Suns. 183. We know the numbers now. That's a nice tweet. That's a nice 10 is days. Is that the number? $183,000 yep. he will it. make on this 10-day contract. The plan is for him to sign Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, it's a 10-day contract, but that roster spot is going to be his, barring anything happening. I mean, he averaged 33 points and 45% three-point shooting Eesh. in the G League. All four games, he had 30 points or more. You think about shooting, playoff experience. He's been a part of title chases in Boston. The yeah. veteran leadership, even if he doesn't play, I think that's a guy you can look at in the locker room as well. I got a, a great text statement from Danny Ainge over the weekend. Obviously, their relationship, when Isaiah Thomas got traded from Boston, we know there was, there was a little bit of a grudge held there. There was a little bit of cold stint in that relationship. Then Danny Ainge brings Isaiah Thomas back to the Utah Jazz organization. He plays for the Salt Lake City Stars, at least of this uh, call-up now. 
Danny Ainge told me he's special, as driven as anyone I know. He made a difference to everyone he was around in 10 short days in the G League. I couldn't be happier for him. Good pickup by the Suns. So, mm -hmm. a lot of things accomplished for Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> that relationship with Danny Ainge being patched up is one of them. He's deserving. Yeah, hey, and anybody that knows IT knows he's the greatest guy. He's not going to come in there. He's going to be zero distraction. And and last week we could just see he's not giving up. He's going to nope. continue to try and. Not to do my own homer show, but I did call Phoenix Suns because it makes sense. They have no point guard. This kid is, and by the way, forget him being a great guy because he is. He was killing. What did you say his numbers were? 34 and 44 like percent? Game, right? 30, 33 points a game. Yeah. yeah, like the guy, he deserves it. He went, he did his stint, and now he, and I hope he gets an opportunity here in this 10 day stretch because the Phoenix Suns, by the way, need a point guard to set up that offense. And it can be a guy that's more deserving of the opportunity. You know, when you talk about veterans and, and, how hard it is to get back in the league, get back on a team. For three years, IT has been consistently talking, tweeting, manifesting his way back into the NBA. So the Charlotte stint was a great one for him. Now he has an opportunity with Phoenix to compete for a championship yep. if they can get it together. I don't know if they needed another scoring punch, but if you're going to add a scoring punch, Isaiah Thomas is one of the guys to go and get. I'm extremely happy for my friend. Um, I shot him a text when, it, when he got picked up. This is great for him, great for his family, great for his career. This was a good one. Um, but the Suns thing is weird because, you know, you heard the KD numbers. This is a loss to a Bucks team with no Giannis, Lou. At this point in the season, March, uh, how concerning is that? You know, the game, that game isn't, <laughs> well, that game isn't concerning to me because they lost to a better team. You know? I, yeah, but no Giannis. Like, how? Yeah, but I, listen, a, a Dame Lillard and a Chris Middleton have beat a lot of teams by themselves. Yeah, uh, Bobby Portis playing. Yeah, Bobby. And, but listen, that, well, that, that team, well. that team is, they're turning into a well-oiled machine. That team without Giannis can beat a lot of teams. So it's not really concerning to me. Like I said, them not really limping into the postseason, but we just hadn't seen, the, it's, it's flash without the fire right now. And at any moment, they can turn into the, one of the worst nightmares in the Western Conference. I just hadn't felt it. I hadn't seen it. And, you know, I'm a groove guy. I'm a vibe guy. And I hadn't felt, I hadn't felt the vibe. So I don't, really, I don't really take that game to be too much. But, you know, they got to figure it out very soon. The concerning thing to me is how in the hell does Kevin Durant play 41 minutes and take 10 shots? I don't know. Like that, that's unacceptable. And he's got to know that. He's got to be more aggressive. I don't care if they're bad shots. You're Kevin Durant. You have to be aggressive. You have to set the tone. And you're the best so player fun. on this team. You've been the best player everywhere you went, whether it was the Warriors, the Thunder, the Nets. Everywhere you went, you've been the guy. So don't ever play 41 minutes again and take 10 shots. That's ridiculous. It was an odd KD night. Um, let's move on. Warriors, Lakers. A lot of stuff. Stars in the house for this one. But the Warriors win. Steph Curry uh, returns 128, 121 total. He had 31 points. Oh, there he was. Clay Thompson with 26. LeBron, 49 assists, eight rebounds. And there were a lot of reviews. There was a clock, shot clock malfunction. Uh, JLo was not happy about any of this. But the crucial <laughs> hugs replay review, LeBron had a three-pointer taken away that was on a challenge of an out-of-bounds play. And even after the game on this one, Steve Kerr said he didn't like this call. Uh, do replay reviews need to change somehow, Chandler? Well, I mean, I mean, he's out of bounds, so they they, they reviewed it. And yeah, but that's not what you're reviewing. It's that's it's always tough because you always want the review to be there, right? And then if sure. the review at the end of the game happened all throughout the game, so many calls would be overturned on balls going off people's hands and things like that. So there are so many different ways. Was we he can for look sure out this. though? I mean, he was out. He was out of bounds. So it's at the end of the day, I think the biggest concern is that they get the call right, whether that's at the end of the game or the beginning of the game. My issue is that they will, don't do this in the beginning of the game. So there's probably multiple plays so you that happen like this, but then it's just going to prolong the game and guys are going to be waiting and celebrities are going to be looking there yawning I courtside. Mean, so bored they it's were. It's going to be exhausting, <laughs> but I think the main thing is get it right, which they did. But again, if they did this in the eight minutes to go in the second quarter, there's probably a call that if they reviewed, it would have been overturned and that could have swung the game differently. So I don't know how you fix that without messing up the complete flow of the game, but this is why we have this technology and this science to be able to go still, back and look, and they got I, it right. I just need consistency in what are we reviewing? Because hmm. a lot of t if that's the case, then you can change anything that you missed during a review, right? If you're reviewing something else and you oh, by the way, I saw this, so that point doesn't count, or that three-pointer doesn't count. I don't understand the review at this point. If we are reviewing out of bounds, 
yes, let's review out of bounds. But if that's the case, you're gonna find something wrong in every single play. <laughs> and what if you're reviewing out of bounds, but during the review you see that the guy was actually fouled before, so does the out of bounds yeah, so, not count? Right, so that's my that's my issue with the with the rules and the reviews. Listen, the game is never gonna be 100% right. Referees are never gonna be 100% right. I think we've, we've put ourselves in a position where we, we're overcorrecting too many things. I think defensively, Def the defensive issue that we have where guys can't, that was an overcorrect from the hand checking. Now you got you got all these reviews, it's an overcorrect from everybody complaining. How many times do you see guys doing this during the oh, game? Yes. Every, every single time. It's like, bro, we're not going to review. And it's back, it'll it be the first play of the game actually. and a kid's yeah, like it's this. Like but it's like a kid that's like, no offense, but like pretty far we're down. We're not using the like, time out yeah. on you, bro. <laughs> we're it's, not you, doing you know that. what I'm saying? So I, I, I think it's just an overcorrect. Well, that's it. also the problem, too, is coaches have to be you know, conscious of when they use the review. They could know that they missed the call early, but they, in the back of their mind, they're trying to save and wait for a play like this. Absolutely. Something that, that has more meaning and impact on the game. So it is tough. I don't know how to fix it, but I think the biggest thing is that they get it right. And they, on this particular play, it looked like he was out of balance. So it's, they got it right. And it necessarily maybe wouldn't have changed much, but they, look, the Lakers have a, a bigger issue than maybe just this one call. They're giving up almost 121 points a game since the All-Star break, which is the third most in the league at this point in the year, Chandler, what what's the problem? Well, they're not that great of a defensive of a defensive You're team, honestly. They they allow too many transition points. They turn the ball over and teams get out. But the good thing for them is they have they're going to make the play in, right? So they're going to be that 10 seed. So I think to them it's all health. It's all make sure Anthony Davis is right. Make sure LeBron James is right. Make sure D'Lo. Make sure all these guys going into this playing because look, it's 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 March Madness. It's one game and they could be done. So I think for them, they they they've shown signs that they can beat certain teams they can play in the half court they can play in transition but when they click on all cylinders offensively they're very very good but they have to find a way to have good balances when they go small when they go big they can switch pick and rolls in certain lineups but they just they, they also turn the ball over a lot and they get teams get out in transition and they're not a great transition defense team so it's they have a lot of issues which is why they're currently in the 10th seed in the western conference yeah. uh but listen it's going to take one or two games and they're going to be right in there uh, Anthony Davis left this one with a, ugh, I hate these, by the way, corneal abrasion, corneal which can abrasion. suck for a minute. Um, is he going to miss more time? It, I mean, that, that's an injury where it really just depends where you get hit, how yeah. bad it is, timing. <clears throat> and his what? eye was literally shut uh, after the game. Do you not Has like Chandler corneal abrasions? No, 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 no. Carry on. Come on, let's what go. What do you carry so on? Anthony <laughs> Davis, Michelle, is listed questionable to play tonight yep. against the Hawks. I'm told there's optimism he'll be able to play. He's been able to regain his vision. Uh, I think over the last 24 it? hours. Goggles, we got to go close. goggles. AD with the goggles. No, you got to keep it closed. He's got to so play. Heal. I got him in my prop bed a little. I'm not peek. sure he's if he's going to have goggles or not, but I know when, when that game was going on on Saturday and I was there, but... What, what what I heard is in the fourth quarter and even after the game, like he could barely open his eye. I but know. I think as overnight went on, by the time it got to yesterday morning, his eye, he was able to regain his vision, um, feeling a lot better. And I think very well, he, he could very well play tonight. Have you ever, I had one once that I had to go to the emergency room. That's how no. bad it was. They give you these drops that numb everything. It's like this magical drug land. Yeah. But yeah. it sucks because you, you got to keep your eye closed. Like yeah, antibiotic stuff. So it can heal. Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, those drugs are cool. Corneal abrasion. Corneal abrasion. Can you not say it? Is yeah, it? I got it. That's what we were Cornea calling. abrasion, corneal abrasion. You were yeah. calling it cornea abrasion? I, I don't he didn't know. even know what it was. I didn't know the term. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Bad I didn't know. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I can't believe you guys are doing this today, but they're going to pick who's going to win the NCAA title. Just like that on Monday. Right. We'll run it back, return. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. All right, we uh, this is not too early, right? Everybody's today, tomorrow, gonna be doing your brackets. Got to get them done. And guys, um, major upsets. That's really what we're all waiting for come Thursday. So Chandler, start us off. Okay. I'm looking at my bracket right now. Um, yeah. First major upset in this tournament, according to you, will be what? The 13 seed Samford is going to knock off Kansas. Dang. That's my wow. big one. I saw that the two That's best players, <laughs> McEuler and Dickinson, they might be out for Kansas. I don't like their mojo right now. They've not looked great as of late. Samford, I like, is a huge upset in the first round. Who else we got here? I love Drake beats Washington State. It's a 10-7, not the craziest mm, one. Okay. Um, and then you have one, which I like the follow-up of that one. You just took it, but I... Oh, I did? <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought you had New Mexico. I like New, I like New Mexico over Clemson. And then, by the way, I like... 11-6. And, and then I like New Mexico the next round to beat the three-seed Baylor. 
I love New Mexico. What is going on? Okay. So Eddie House's kid, Mexico Jamal Mashburn's kid. Oh, that's Tino. Okay. Eddie House made me Nepo a fan babies. over the weekend. That's my son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's how I'm going to be at the game. So, so that's New nice. Mexico. So we like New Mexico. I should be barking this Shout out to Eddie House and Eddie House Jr. I hope this is Nevada. Shout out Lola Ramblers. Give him a name. Shout out Lola Ramblers. What do you mean, shout out? Are you for the NIT? Are you in here? <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm just trying to, to read all Chicago. this. Just your guy. I also just, like just Nevada over Dayton, if anyone's interested. Really? Why yeah. is that? Dayton made the NCAA tournament. Yes, there's there's. there's and you know what else? I like I like Michigan State over St. Mary's Me too. Me too. Me too. And then I like Michigan State in the next round as well. We got a couple. We crushed weeks. Dayton a few weeks ago. I just want to. So that here's out. my thing, Michelle. <laughs> you were at that game. What's interesting is I got Sanford beating Kansas, and then okay. and I also got 12 McNeese beating five Gonzaga, which means one of those teams could possibly go to the Sweet 16 of That's McNeese. That's two upsets. Sanford, right yeah. next to each other. I mean, it's all a crapshoot. What, what do we know? But. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting. For the first time in a long time, there's no clear favorites. You know, obviously, UConn is probably the best team in the, but that's in the tournament. So boring. But Houston yeah. has been the number one team all year, and they get knocked off in their tournament. So it's going to be get interesting. I like NC <clears throat> State, 11 seed over Texas Tech, a six seed. Ooh. I even like maybe a little Jimmy Madison over Wisconsin. Who knows, Michelle? I got to fill one out. You have a lot of I do. going on. I'm always go it's so easy. It sucks because, obviously, when you fill out the bracket and I pick, like, you know, Marquette to lose to Western Kentucky first round, that's when they usually go to the Final Four, and mm -hmm. my whole bracket is busted. But there's a lot of good college basketball teams where there's a lot of, if you have good guards in the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. you can advance. And a lot of these teams have really good guards with the transfer pool, with NIL. These kids are older now. So I like the mid-majors that have these transfers that are on their fourth and fifth mm -hmm. year. The transport, hey, listen, the portal that, is going crazy That's right what now. I mean. I like them you over this the young <laughs> team that actually just recruited kids from high school. Like looking up, just looking up Grand Canyon antelopes to see if that would might be something I'd be interested in. I'm not sure yet. Um, Sweet 16, we need a Cinderella, the Cinderella story that we can keep our eye on. My Cinderella is going to be Colorado. They're going to win their play-in game. They're going to lose to Florida first round. Well, Florida just got dubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You have them beating Chandler's Florida? That's, I do. That's, I do have them beating Chandler's Florida. It's, it's, it's a, it's a they better get past fighting. Boise State in the play-in. Like, they're the play we're not they're like worried the about that blue they're grass. They're in the play-in. We're not worried about the blue turfers. <laughs> they're in the play-in. Colorado is going to beat them. Prime is going to – Coach Prime is going to You just covered your eyes and pointed, and that's where it landed off. I actually did. This is – that's the – that's the beauty of March that's, that's, a, that's a fight, by the way, waiting to happen. All right, yeah. then let's just jump to Final Four, Chandler. What do you got? Okay, so my Final Four, I think we have a little uh, deck here to pull up. But Why? I because like, you don't Because he's going to need it. I like <laughs> University. <laughs> Chandler's got Florida. <laughs> I like Florida, for sure. It. And again, I'm a homer. So I, And we didn't look good in the SEC Championship last night, but we do, we do have... Uh, you know, a lot of transfers, a lot of good guards play, and I like UConn in the championship play against them. Boring. With my brain, I think UConn wins it all, but I th with my heart, I picked the Florida Gators to win it all. With my heart. With my heart. Okay, yeah. great, fair enough. <laughs> and then I forgot who I picked for the other two. I Clearly. Be I yeah. believe, I don't know, but I think I it's, know, it's Florida, Carolina. UConn, and Tennessee and Arizona. I love the kid Dalton Connect on Tennessee. He's an absolute <laughs> stud. I don't know how colleges miss on a guy like this. I like he's that. He's 6'8", he's 6'9", he's athletic as shit. He can shoot the ball. The guy's had 30 plus points in like 10 different games. He's an absolute stud. We can agree there. I got Tennessee in my final four. Houston, okay. Auburn, North Carolina. In my championship game, I have North Carolina and Houston. Houston wow. as the winner. Houston takes it all. Calvin Sampson. Shout they were, out they were, Calvin Sampson. Shout out to Coach Sampson. They were there last year. They were one of the top seeds, didn't get it done. I think this is their opportunity. Houston wins it all this year. It's like two one seeds. That's not fun. Well, I got some upsets, but uh -huh. listen, in a in a tournament of a lot of mid-major action, <laughs> yep. you got to go with, I'm going with a mid-major. No, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's not too bad. It's not UConn. Chandler, favorite memory from playing in this tournament for you? Uh, just like surviving and advancing every week. It's so much fun. The whole campus comes to wherever, whatever region you're in. It's, it's, it's why I wanted to go to the University of Florida. Like, I love the th idea of March Madness, college basketball growing up. I love Billy Donovan, and I loved, you know, <laughs> when I was a junior and senior in high school, they arguably the, one of the best college basketball teams of all time was the Joe Kim Noah, Corey Bruford, the back-to-back. -back. So I, I just thought it was fun. And it's a little different now at the NIL and with transfers where there's no accountability, right? If I go to Florida and I hate the coach, okay, I'm just going to go to Cincinnati because they That's gave me awesome. 50 grand more and this. So there's not as much love. Like even these kids on Florida right now, they're a bunch of transfers that didn't pick University of Florida originally. So it's a little, it's, it's lost its luster a little bit, but the kids are getting paid and they're financially more stable now at a younger age. But 
it's to me it's just so much fun it's a playing. job Chandler yeah it is it's just it's so much fun I got jimmered really bad I almost have a bad memory of the tournament Jimmer gave us like 50 and we got knocked out by BYU Shout out to but even yeah Shout out but that, for that those games are just so intense it's like a playoff for the NBA it's, it's every every possession is kind of it's, it's the best I always find it fascinating maybe I'm the only one but there are some names that come out of the tournament that we never really hear from again. And yeah. I find that to be a fascinating part of this whole like thing. Like there'll be a kid on Vermont this year who will have 30 and they'll beat Duke and this kid will just be a household name and he'll be, like it's 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 the biggest greatest opportunity for these low major teams that have an opportunity to take on, you know, the big Michigan State's Kansas Duke. So it's fun. Nothing else matters from this point forward. And it's just <laughs> one game survive in advance. That's why you see all these upsets because <clears throat> these teams, it's the biggest game of their lives. There's no career afterwards for a lot of these kids. They're not going to the NBA. Some yeah. of them don't even play overseas. So this is their everything. And so you can see that with the intensity and in they play. Lou, do you do anything? Do you have like a ritual to watch the tournament? Is there anything that you, or is it just you on a couch on a Thursday chilling? Usually it's probably going to be, I have a, a room with a bunch of TVs and all of that in my house usually me and a few of the guys we'll probably drink a brew or a few and, mm, and, okay. and, all, and binge watch games you know as, as as the tournament unfolds it's tough to not to watch NBA during this time like this is it's you know it does I mean? take a back but seat. even if we're, we're legally you, we're contractually you know, I, obligated well we so. don't have to we could do the NCAA That's tournament sure. all. You, you remember <laughs> while, while we're in the locker rooms the NCAA tournament oh, is on and, sure. on every TV guys are in the training room you're, getting, sure. you're getting ready for games and you can hear oh big big upset even calling games we have like what? monitors that are on oh yeah the, oh and whenever your college plays another, what's the biggest bet? It's an automatic thousand dollar bet. Well, yeah, that's it's a thousand automatic. Like bet. even like Johnny Manziel was hitting well, me about the Texas A&M. No, that's the. I was saying that's the buy-in. That's the that's the minimum bet. That's the minimum. Bet. That's the minimum yeah, bet. like Florida. The I do like you've that. Seen bet Chandler. Ah, we don't, it's it's it gets up to yeah, it can get it's, up it's there. It's statute of limitations. Well, you don't yeah. have to say a name, but I've Chandler's seen I've seen a couple million hundred grand in Florida. Bit. I've never put millions, but I've put yeah. I put a you lot talk of about money. school pride. <laughs> like I will be like betting. Yeah, school pride tea. is real though. School, school it's pride is definitely real, even with for me. A know. couple hundred yeah. thousand that deep. No, no, no. I, I just said my I'll be, I'll, I will be betting an offensive amount on Florida with whoever they play, Colorado or Boise State. I will take a lot of money. I'd be Florida. surprised if I bet $100 over anything. God yeah, I don't. This tournament. It's, it's too hard of a, of a it is tournament impossible. to sort of figure out. Um, are we taking a break? We're taking a break. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, that man has a family. Don't throw that away. That's your bracket. we got to figure it all out. That's my bracket. That man has that a family. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Actually, I haven't filled one out yet. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it. Around the league we go. Weird. Kyrie didn't have the only buzzer beater of the night. Bam! Had a pretty good Actually, one, too. More threes three. lately. When it rains, it pours, Pistons. Oh, that's a, that's a big three. Although, should it get to that point with the Pistons? No, it shouldn't. But you know what's crazy about this game? Fournier is going to catch a fine here because after this shot, he punted the ball <laughs> into the ground. Is that wrong? I mean, violently punted it. <laughs> which I just also means to like, why the Pistons <laughs> acting like they care they lost. I mean, look, that's, is that not a, I think it's a good sign that they care. Yeah, they I guess. This point, it's just, maybe. this is what, it, what it's. They should this be all out of the cookie crumbles for them this year, yeah. Makes sense. Would have been a bad loss for Miami. That's that was what I was you're, a month, you're a month away from a five-month vacation, yeah. man. Go find you some Talk sunshine. It up. You're, that shot's That's, helping you get a better pick. That's a long, crappy season, though. By the way, 12th three-pointer of the career is of his career for Bam, which is kind of crazy. That's it? I, yeah, I would have felt like it had been more. See? How many? How Things many this you year, though? Do we know how four, many? Four, I think I saw. Four this year. Yeah, he's been shooting a lot more threes. He's been shooting more mid-range shots. It's crazy. He's like, gonna need at least knock some corner threes down. Spo yeah. said that there's a karma to this whole thing, and that the ball fine. Finds the dude doing the most, man. Do you believe that? This, I hate you. <laughs> this <laughs> makes me think of, of two two terms in a basketball world. One, I'm a credit to a coach. I'm not gonna say his name because he's an asshole and he's a troll on Twitter at this oh. point. Well, I didn't um, know he got. He said, "Why are you talking about George Carl?" Talking about George Carl. Listen, if the shoe fits, wear it. I'm not going viral with George oh. Carl again. He was like picking on me on Twitter, like, "If you're gonna get in the media, anyways." <laughs> <laughs> Good teams find a way to win and bad teams find a way to lose. That's mm. one. Okay. And the other one, don't mess with the basketball gods. Don't mess there with the is. game. 
that's where the karma comes in. Play the right way, do things the right way, good things will happen. It is true. Like, the minute you don't box out on like a three, your guy's getting the offensive <laughs> rebound. Or if you don't close, like you don't close out, like the ball's bouncing to the guy you're supposed to be covering. Fair. It, it is it is true where you don't mess with the basketball guys. You don't, you know, take advantage of the game and Again, this is just you know, this, this is a bad break for the Pistons. It is. Miami side it shouldn't have been this close. And also that um, we don't have we haven't had our Wimby moment yet in the show, but luckily it's Here coming we go. right now. Uh, 33 points, 16 rebounds, seven assists, seven blocks. Oof. God, he's so close. Uh, leading the Spurs to a 122-115 win over the Nets. Oh, he also my. shot 14 of 26 from the field, so he is the first player in NBA history to reach all of those numbers. Jim. What do you think about that? There's not much more to say, Michelle. It's at least they won. That's what you got. Victor Wembanyama already has more career blocks than 81.4 percent of all active NBA players. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Listen, it's, it's, it's insane. I can't wait to see him do this on a good team. It's I coming. can't wait to see him on national TV and big moments game on the line and I want to see him and no doubt I think he's going to be that guy I think he's going to do it but we keep seeing numbers like this it's crazy I know we keep talking about the quadruple double that's coming so he needed three assists and three blocks and then it's mama wins her it. bet let's you go. guys remember once upon a time how critical we were of Russell Westbrook when he was I doing the never historical was. numbers and we were like oh he's number chasing and like this hoping, and that hoping, hoping and now we're really hoping that this guy gets all the numbers and stats in the world and he's on the worst team in the West? Well, I didn't have FanDuel back then, okay? okay. So right. that stuff didn't matter to me as much as it, it is. It is great. Though, even those highlights, watching him like go behind, everything he does It's very just, pretty. Yeah, it's unpopular. But, but also oddly I'm, weird looking sometimes, because you're just like, your body, his body sh yeah. shouldn't look like that. I agree with Chandler, though. I'm ready to see it, see him do it on a big stage exactly. where these numbers are very meaningful, yeah. and he's turning the corner. Do it in career. June. That's when it's gonna happen. Well, they're trying, Chandler. Uh, let's get to some Batman. Has a big How about Jalen Brown? A nice little a steal. Uh, back to our regular oh, schedule program. Oh, oh. It's not a running back show until a white dude gets dumped. Right. Oh, this would have got, yeah, oh. got a 50 in the dunk Hey, contest. shout out to Grayson Allen for his maturity, because the Grayson yeah. Allen, I know he would have took Jalen Brown That's ass true. up. That's a great point, actually. That's, That's the Grayson Allen we did This is a flagrant two. Yeah, this happen. is a flagrant two for sure. All right, Meechich. Pardon? Well, well, well. Oh, that this is nasty. Kevin Durant. Oh no, y'all. This was a slight push off if you see it from a different angle. Like, eh. as actually Ever so slight. Yeah, like it's a dead ass <laughs> look. Charge. He surprised himself. He <laughs> barely got the ball around his back. But look, <laughs> nonetheless, he finished. He. Oh, uh, this is nasty. That is bad. What's the score of this game? It doesn't matter. Who's this guy? <laughs> Who's this guy? Who is? Who is? That was, was a lot of questions. Thunder? Yeah, he was on the Me Thunder. Uh, star in Europe. When did that happen? Oh, uh, I like this. Ooh, your guy Jalen Johnson. Johnson. I like this. Oh, on the old Hawk, John Collins. That's the like the weirdest hawk. lob I've ever seen, though. I gotta admit, look. That is kind of odd. That was, it was perfectly placed, though. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, it was like it looks a little, little, little teardrop. Usually you see a lob yeah. up high. This is low. Look at John Collins even tapped him up. Like, all right, good dunk. <laughs> John's seen this movie yeah. before. Thanks. Respect. Miles Turner, Nick Next Claxton, teammates. step on up. That court is so oh, odd. Oh, the to two me. hand, two foot? Two hand, two foot. Oh. A lot going on. Miles there. Turner, highly underrated this year. He's having a year. Strong side. There you <laughs> go. Eesh. I mean, I love this Ooh. for me is the best one because Keon Allen's face. This was brilliant, by it's the way. Did you so see this good. play? <laughs> He's looking for the screen, looking for the screen. So Jalen uh -huh. runs some oh, points, my. like the screen's coming, and as soon as he looks, he well, just... Well, it's you, perfect. You know the first law. Do not look back. Right. Feel around. This Ash. is why you got to communicate. Oh, look at oh it's so good. It's like a cartoon. Head. And the internet had some fun with it because they've like slowed it down where his face, he's just, what look, just happened man. to me? Keon Ellis. It's, it's really good. Man, young fella. Really good. Got to be quicker than that. Mm. Almost had it. Almost had it. All right, we're taking a quick break. break. Uh, more run it back. Yes. When we return. Uh, dang it, dang it. Yes. First one on a Monday. See what I did there? I added some oomph. Uh, Heat Sixers. Amazing that's a, <laughs> Shut up. That's a game that we have coming up in a few hours, many hours. Same record, but the Heat are in the seven spots. Sixers are in the eight. Talk to me. Who needs it more, Lou? 
Sixers. Yep, that seemed easy. Next. Yeah, they're in the eighth <laughs> spot. Heat are in the seventh. They need to move up. But realistically. This is a must win for the Sixers. I think the opposite. I think realistically it's the Heat. They're a better team. They're playing yeah, for something. Ask the you. Sixers know they aren't really. A... How can you say one uh, not playing for say. something other than that? There's because they have this one guy, Joel Embiid, who's out, and the team took a huge hit ever since he went down. So they're they're, they're probably going to be a play-in team in a first-round exit. The Miami Heat are looking to get out of that play-in and be a, a nightmare matchup for the Cavs in the first round. That was the logic I was thinking, too. Right, but sometimes when some a team shows you who they are, oh. that's who they are. The well Miami said. Heat has been in this spot all season. 76ers have not. The Heat are a better team. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I will say this. Nick Nurse did say that the Sixers are quite content with where Embiid is right now as far as the progress and that they are, quote, hoping. They better not bring him back. Hoping to have him back. They got to think long term. Tonight? No, with the end of this season. Yeah, I still got the heat. <laughs> Come on, man. Think long term, Philly. Let's do it right. Well, by the way, if he's healthy, let him play in the play. If in. he's healthy. Like, let, let, him, let him play. But it's tough. Now you see the rise of Milwaukee and you know how good Boston is. If you're at 7 8 seed, it's like, do you bring him back? I, that's, I don't want to make that decision. I don't know. I guess I'm thinking, I'm thinking old school. Like, you tear a meniscus or ACL or something, it's going to take time. And it's, it's going to be a lengthy recovery. That's that's the mindset I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, obviously, if he's healthy, let him play. Uh, Tyler Hero, when can we see him on the floor again? I mean, he got a from what I'm told he got a PRP injection in his foot on Friday, Eggs. and so at least over this week, next week, be reevaluated. Right. They're not sure when he's going to be back. Well, that is not ideal. But you know what is wrestle ball? Oh, that's right. Live from Russia. Give me <laughs> wrestle ball. All day, Look every day. The <laughs> By the way, you have to take your shirt off, from what I gather, before you can this? tackle. No. Yeah, yeah, watch. Look at that. Shirt off, tackle. Is that like a tag oh. in? Is that like to alert the other team? That <laughs> what if I grab ball? your shirt? No, no, what, yeah, if I, what if I grab you and you can't take your so shirt off? wrestle basketball. Yeah, pretty much. I well, love it. Will we ever see like an <laughs> NBA Listen, guys, player? Yo, who really who would be good at this? I got news for y'all. This has nothing to do with basketball. Look, look yeah, at the ball. Everything to do with basketball. They want to take their this anger out. Tra- I can see like radio. Dwight Howard going and doing this next. <laughs> he's just not done playing. He's strong. He's big. I mean, he's shooting the ball. And then he's getting wrestled. Well, I don't know what your problem There's is. There's actually Lou. people there watching. And they bought a ticket. <laughs> Look at this shit. Yeah, do we have a team that would, like, which, t- I mean, who has nothing to, what like, who's the MVP sh- of this league? Yo, I think the Charlotte tackler. could win this. Clearly. This is tough. Who's this? Is, where so is this? Who you like? Russia. You like Dwight Howard? I got Grayson Allen. He, he'll be a star in this Yeah, season. Isaiah Stewart's a good one. That's a great one. Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah That's Stewart a will be a star That's a really in this good league. one. Shams, can you get us the score salaries in like like WrestleMall for tomorrow? Yeah. I need to know what this is worth. How do you, <laughs> how do you score in this? The games are to 11. I think you score the ball and you get a point for that. Like a successful. Look, pink, look, look he got his shot, shot off. Is that an and one? see his shot? <laughs> I just watch this for the... No, there's no, there's no fouls, the right? Rest, <laughs> I don't you know can how suplex you... somebody, there's definitely not a foul. I do want to know, the, the shirt off <coughs> thing, is that required or is that just flare? We got, I need more information. I, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole when I get right. in the car on my way home. Full book report from Lou tomorrow on I got Russell it. Ball, courtesy of Russia. 500 <laughs> letter essay. We appreciate it so much. We will be back tomorrow with Tyler Hansborough. Hey. Psycho T. There it is. Run it one back. One of my favorites. See you in the morning. Favorite. Shout out to North One. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back.